Hi there and welcome to Masterpieces in Miniature. In this video I'm just trying to introduce you to a new project which I'm trying to do as a retirement project. As you can see from the t-shirt I've retired. My daughter's bought me this t-shirt on my retirement and it says living the dream. One of my dreams is always to build one of these locomotives. A model of the BR Standard Class 4 4610 tender locomotive. I intend to build the model as 75029 called the Green Knight. This locomotive is currently on the North Yorkshire Moors Railway undergoing restoration and should be running within the next year or so. I intend to build the model with the VR2 tender, which is the smaller tender of the variants that these locomotives ran with. The whole engine is lighter in weight than the standard 5, etc. And that the idea was that these could venture onto railway lines that the others were too heavy to run on. Many years ago, when I was a young lad at school, I bought one of these, the Airfix kit of the BR Standard Class 4. It was called a mogul. Now, as far as I'm aware, there aren't in existence any plans for a seven and a quarter inch gauge version of this as in a model. So my intention is to use two different designs. The locomotive will primarily be built around the designs from Hawley miniature locomotives. They do a seven and a quarter inch gauge version of the BR standard class 4 264 tank engine. The wheel arrangement around here is the same and the cylinders are the same as the BR standard class 4 tank engine. So that would be good to work that side of it up. They also do the drawings for the BR2 tender which this locomotive carries. Let's just have a brief look at one of the drawings and see the detail and the quality of the drawings that you can expect from Hawley Miniature Locomotives. They also do the drawings for a BR Standard Class 5 locomotive and I believe the pony truck at the front with the four wheels on is exactly the same as that. The full size locomotive runs with exactly the same bogey on the 5 and the 4. So that can lend itself to the model. This can lend itself to the model. That can lend itself to the model, the tender. And then there's the main locomotive itself and for the dimensions of that I intend to use the Doug Hewison drawings from the 5 inch gauge version which are very good very well detailed um, drawings and they're available from the Steam Workshop if anybody wanted to build a 5 inch gauge model of the class 4 they do the castings for it and they do the drawings for it in five inch gauge. And my intention is to have the drawing and blow it up to exactly the same scale for seven and a quarter inch gauge. So the thing with scaling then is that I'm going to do this at 1.54 of an inch to the foot as opposed to 1.5 inch to the foot, which many locomotives are built to from model drawings, etc. The Jim Vass drawings are, built, are drawn to 1.54 with an option here and there to do bits at 1.5 because it doesn't really matter. In fact, the buffers for mine, I've already machined those, which we'll see later. And I was under the misinterpretation that the 1.54 was with respect to the tender and that was with respect to the fact that it would be a longer tender to sit on, etc. But I've later been informed that 1.54 is just a true scaled down thing, where 1.5 is more for model work, as I say, easier to work things out. So unfortunately, I machined my buffers up 
to 1.5, thinking that the 1.54 would have made a longer tender and not to scale with the engine. So that's what I did. And unfortunately, as I say, my buffers are now made at 1.5 of an inch to the foot. But being as that was uh, steel that I had from a, a mill many years ago, some 30 some years ago in fact, I, uh, I, I want to retain it into the model of the locomotive. So I'm going to keep them at 1.5. So hauling miniature locomotives do many of the castings for this engine and the tender. And 17D miniatures also do many of the standard locomotive castings etc so all in all i should be able to get quite a lot of the castings for this from either of the suppliers there are there will be other suppliers on the market as well but i'm just not aware of them at the moment but this is just a video introducing the fact that i intend to run a series building this locomotive which will be a very long series as you can imagine i'm only a beginner at the hobby and I've got very limited machinery at my disposal at the moment and hand tools etc. But over the years that this locomotive will take to build my skill set will improve and also the machinery and the tooling which I've got uh, to build the locomotive that tool will also increase. The thing is then do I, do I go for a, a steel boiler or do I go for a copper boiler? Do I make the boiler myself or do I buy the boiler out? If at current 20, uh, 2021 prices, a boiler for this would be in the region of about £7,000 in copper and probably a third or a quarter of that perhaps in steel. The thing with the copper boiler would be that it would send the heat around a lot better, heat the water better and maintain the temperature within the boiler a lot better than a steel one and a steel one may well have to have all the cladding removed and the boiler itself removed from the locomotive for testing every six or nine years depending on the boiler inspector's um, desires to see it unclad shall we say but a copper boiler that could remain in the locomotive all the time and just do its normal testing in the frames and that would reduce such a lot of work over a, a six or nine year period of course by the time the locomotive was built and six or nine years later when the uh, boiler inspector at paperwork asked for the boiler to be removed i probably won't be here so it wouldn't be my problem <laughs> but uh, that's by the by so here's my double o gauge model of this locomotive i intend to make the buffers at the front of the locomotive and at the rear of the tender then all I need to do is build everything in between. Because it's such a large and complex project, I'm actually going to split the project into two sections. I'm going to separate the engine and the tender into two different projects. I'm going to do the tender first. So having done the buffers at the rear of the tender, I will then do the front buffers at the front of the tender between the locomotive and the tender itself. Then all I need to do is again work between the buffers and build everything in between. That is the easiest and smallest and cheapest part of the project and it will allow me to increase my tooling capacities and my skill factors. So I will get the tender done first and then I'll move on to the locomotive and the more precise uh, and exact machining. Now in building this locomotive there will be a lot of castings, a lot of expensive castings. So I will try to uh, do some fabrication work perhaps to alleviate buying some of those castings because I'm a Yorkshire lad. The finished model is intended to be done out in green just as it is here, all lined up. I think they'll look very nice when they're like that. So anyway, there we are. That's what I'm hoping to do anyway. To build one of these in 7 a quarter inch gauge and also to film it along the way and try and present it in a series of films for people to watch and hopefully 
learn something from. I'm sure I'll learn a lot along the uh, process and along the way. And hopefully we'll reach the end of the line with a finished locomotive. But it will be a good number of years, so watch this space. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye for now.